One of seven of thirteen at 110. Right there. Time Warner Company. All right, because I want to give credit where credit's due to the Time Warner Company, okay? You can see the representation of one of seven of 13 of 110. You have one logo. In this one logo, there are seven squares, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To make this logo, you need 13 lines, guys. You have two ladders. What's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. And if you can't see 110 in this depiction, we have problems, guys. 1, 1, and a 0. 1 of 7 of 13 of 110 is a representation of the Earth. showing you how this flag is equal to 1 of 7 of 13 of 110 because it is one flag has seven red stripes 13 total stripes and the 110 is a derivation of the nine rows 11 columns and 10 diagonal crosses which is your depiction of XYZ and that blue square is a galaxy within the universe of the flag which is why we circle the result of this equation, 9 times 11 is 99, plus 10 is 109, in a galaxy of the universe of flag, which equals 110. Yama Prestani. The world is changed. I feel it in the water. Okay, the name J.R.R. Token, okay? J.R.R. likes to go by J.R.R. with three dots there for a reason, guys. Now, if you break it down, J is 10, R is 18, you have six digits, okay? It depicts this, but you have to account for the singularities because they count too, guys. So there's really nine characters. When you break it down, you get this. Four zeros, four ones, and a six. When you break down token, you get this, which produces the 12 characters. When you break down the characters, like that, you can eventually come up with this. Two zeros, seven ones, and a seven. All right. Now, because we all know very well by now that a zero is equal to a one, you know, a zero is equal to a one, we can switch two of these ones for zeros, thus leaving us with four zeros, five ones, and a seven. Now, I see one name JRR token reading backwards, of course. I see a seven. I see of 13, and I see 110. I feel it in the earth. What happens here when you take his name, so the four zeros, the four ones of his heaven, with the common six and 17, okay? So if you break heaven down into dots and lines, you get four dots and four lines, okay, circled, to create a nine, you know, four dots, four lines, and a one line all the way around, nine, okay? And then the 6 and 17, when you add them together, it's 23. Read it backwards, you have three twos. And the 6 and the seven, 17, like remember I keep saying if you circle it, you add one? Well, this already doesn't have a circle. So if you want to have it to have a circle, I guess we should be going backwards. So maybe I was wrong all this other time, but the concept has kind of been there all the whole time. So maybe a 6 is actually a circled 5, and a 17 is a circled 16. You know, together to make 11, guys? Or 21, 21 I mean? Read it backwards, it's 12, or 21 is the 22, guys. You know, the super ultra master number above 11. 17 is also the seventh prime number, which is interesting, okay? So there's a little trend here, guys. Three, seven, and nine. Oh, I'm not it. Really? I smell it in the air. Much that once was is lost. For none now live who remember it. So let's concentrate on the rings that they talk about in the movie, okay? The three rings given to the elves, the seven rings given to the dwarves, the nine rings given to man, and then the one ring to rule them all. It began with the forging of the great rings. Three were given to the elves, 
immortal, wisest, and fairest of all beings. Alright guys, if you can't see three rings here, we got problems. But, okay, the three rings given to the elves, guys. You know, the elves, you know, the wise, you know? They're like, all like, mystical and stuff, with little lines of majesty coming from their elvish beings. Yeah. Gotta, you know. I'm trying to make a point here. One second, guys. Because, like, you know, seeing is believing, guys. You know, imagination can only take us so far. So, these are the three rings, guys. And look, look at how it breaks down. It even breaks down into a one, two ones, and then four ones. To make the three rings, guys, you know, the central celestial sky of cellular Earth. Okay? Heaven. The X, Y, and Z plans. Seven to the Dwarf Lords. Great miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls. Yeah, seven to the miners, you know, the craftsmen, the guys that make the box. Seven rings, guys, you see them. You have your one ring in the center, and then you have your ring of solenoids. And you have six of them, okay? All the way around. So you have six and you're, you're central. Because remember in Fibonacci, you can never create something down the column without the stuff before it that was already created. From a different point of view, it's also a depiction of this, you know? You have a negative x, x, negative y, y, negative z, z, with a central singularity to make seven. And nine. Nine rings were gifted to the race of men who, above all else, Desire power. Nine rings were gifted to man. How many orange dots do you see? It's the depiction of a plus and an X. It's the wheel of power because one magnet, which is located in heaven, surrounded by magnets, will turn the wheel. And the solenoids, which are going to be in between the two rings of magnets, which I believe to be 42 magnets on the exterior and 8 magnets on the interior, We'll create acceleration. Wheel of power, guys. Nine. For within these rings was bound the strength and will to govern each race. But they were all of them deceived. For another ring was made. In the land of Mordor, in the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord Sauron forged in secret a master ring to control all others, and into this ring he poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. One ring to rule them all. One ring to rule them all just means they put it all together, guys. They put the parts together, okay? Of all the other rings, guys, to work in harmony from chaos, guys. One ring to rule them all. Yeah, it is the ring of power. Wow, guys. That's... I've just decoded Lord of the Rings for you. It's... It's about creation. Of energy. One by one, the free lands of Middle Earth fell to the power of the ring. But there were some who resisted. A last alliance of men and elves marched against the armies of Mordor. On the slopes of Mount Doom, they fought for the freedom of Middle-earth. 